Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the LFN webinar series. Uh, today, we're gonna to be speaking with a couple of members from our FIDO community. Uh, today's topic is how to build secure terabit network services with FIDO technologies. Um, but before I do a quick intro and kick it off to our speakers today, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, all panelists will be muted for the duration of the presentation. If you have questions, uh, please type them in the Q&A window that is on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, we will dedicate some time at the end of the presentation for live Q&A. Uh, so please feel free to type your questions at any time in that window. Um, there will be a recording of this uh, webinar available uh, within the next couple of days. That link will be emailed to all of our registrants. Uh, and we will also post uh, the recording of the webinar on the LFN and FIDO websites so folks can watch it on demand at any time. All right, without further ado, um, our, pres our presenters today are Ray and Machik uh, from the Technical Steering Committee of FIDO. And I will go ahead and kick it off to Ray, who's gonna give a more thorough introduction of himself and Machik, and uh, we will go from there. So thanks for joining everyone. Thank you, Jill, uh, and welcome everyone to the uh, FIDO webinar on how to build secure terabit network services with FIDO technologies. Uh, I've been involved with the FIDO community now for uh, quite a few years, and you know the, we continue to kind of push innovation and uh, performance within the FIDO community, and that's a lot of what we're here today to talk about, is uh, the new stuff available to FIDO, from FIDO to help build fast and secure network services. Um, I should tell you a bit about myself. Uh, I'm uh, Ray Kinsler. I'm a product architect at Intel, and I'm a member of the FIDO Technical Steering Committee. Do you want to say hi, Maciek? Thank you, Ray. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Maciek Konstantinovic, uh, project technical lead for the FDIO uh, assisted project and the founding member of the of the FDIO project in, uh, at the beginning of 2016. Um, uh, I'm a distinguished engineer at, uh, at Cisco, and uh, my passion is to make uh, networking and computing uh, work uh, together. Um, and uh, a, a few uh, words of thank you um, about this, um, about the, what we're gonna talk about. So there's a number of, quite a large community for uh, uh, in FDIO projects, uh, the core projects, VPP and CISID, but also VSAP and others. So this content wouldn't be possible without, uh, without contributions from this community. And special thanks to the folks uh, listed um, on the slide from uh, uh, Cisco and, uh, and Intel. Not all of them uh, always visible in the community, but uh, doing a very hard work um, at the backend. So um, thanks very much. I think with that, uh, Ray, do you want to say anything about this uh, iconic uh, puppy on the right? Oh yeah, the puppy. <laughs> Thanks for the prompt. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're, we're looking to give away some puppies today. Uh, so uh, please chime in for your question. Sorry, with your question. And uh, the, I guess the best couple of questions that we get, we'll get a, the, 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 the people asking the question, we'll get a puppy. So uh, we love, Magic and I love questions, so please chime in and there's a chance to win a puppy or two. Okay, so let's get, uh, let's get going. Uh, Ray, this is your favorite slide. Yeah, um, Intel legal, Eagle noses is, need to be at the upfront in every presentation, uh, just protecting uh, corporate brands and the like. So I think we can move on. Excellent. So a few words of introduction about uh, what we're doing in FDIO. Um, the attitude to uh, benchmarking is pivotal in, uh, in the project and to a great degree distinguishes it from other similar efforts in the industry, uh, open source and, and closed source. So uh, why is that? Um, in networking, throughput latency matter and, um, and if developers and testers and, and the designers who work in the software networking world um, must, uh, by definition, care about performance and the resource usage efficiency. Um, paying attention specifically to the optimized software and hardware interface. So in this world, performance should never be a secondary consideration. Um, and that's why the benchmarking culture permeates everything that is done in FDIO. Two examples of that in terms of the community. Developers um, um, are using FDIO uh, CI benchmarking 
um, to catch performance regressions across multiple compute platforms. So uh, x86, uh, ARM and such, we'll talk about that a bit more. And also verify performance optimizations. That's the tooling we provide, the platform we, we run and operate in LFN FDIO labs, uh, everything in open source. And then for consumers to actually um, uh, level set the expectations and uh, specifically around performance and, and scale uh, and have a reference, an industry reference, that's what we're aiming for in terms of repeatable deterministic performance. And quoting um, David Patterson, who some of you may know, uh, he's a, a, a quite a famous uh, chap, a risk processor inventor and co-author of books on computer architecture together with John Hennessy. For better or worse, benchmarks shape a field. And um, the way we go about it is that we're doing our best to push the progress with good relevant benchmarking and uh, going after real problems. I might say something about that at Magic, if that's okay. Uh, just go you ahead. Know, my own personal experience with Fido is both as a developer and a consumer. So as I contribute code to Fido, there's very extensive checks that get run on my code into CI to make sure that I haven't caused performance regressions. And, you know, make sure that we're keeping Fido performance, you know, patch as patches get submitted and get features get added. So developers have a, 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 a benchmarking driven development experience. But also as consumers, when I'm out talking about FIDO in forums like this, you know, being able to reach for the numbers because it's very easy in FIDO to go reach for the numbers and be able to pull them up and show IPv4 performance and show IPv6 performance and show IPsec performance, which we're going to be talking about a lot today, is a very, very valuable tool. And they're right there, really easy to get in FIDO. Thanks, Magic. Always welcome, Ray. So few words about um, uh, the principles we, we follow. Um, the that are basically uh, uh, principles or traits that are intrinsic in our uh, performance uh, uh, culture at, at FDIO. Um, we, um, the quality uh, over quantity. And when, when I say quality, we really mean uh, measurement verified data proven uh, uh, quality. Um, we, we are uh, spending a lot of time um, focusing on tooling and, and methodology improvements development. And you will see a bit, a bit about that uh, later in the talk. And also, um, very important, the cross-industry collaboration that open source enables. And thanks to that, um, we are able to do things that a few years ago were seemingly uh, impossible. Of course, we're embracing change. That's the part of the world we're in, in terms of technology, internet, and fast-moving world. And, uh, and finally, um, we are really um, spending a lot of attention to openly and widely share all benchmarking data um, uh, there is, uh, you know, everything we do is in the open. Uh, everything we do is uh, shared. And, um, and with that, uh, we have a great experience of attracting a lot of uh, good talent and feedback, um, driving, helping us to drive the envelope. What does this mean in practice? In terms of the code uh, that, uh, that is being uh, developed and, uh, and, uh, and merged and tested and benchmarked in FDO. Optimizations um, in the code um, do not get merged without demonstrated performance advantage. Um, we, we take care of that. Features uh, don't get merged without uh, seeing their impact on, on performance, uh, the, the specific feature and collateral uh, performance impact. Um, releases don't happen with regressions, and if they do, we, we root cause them. And every patch gets tested. Um, and above all, um, quoting uh, Mr. Uh, Tafti, um, if you know him uh, from Envision Information, uh, Above all, uh, above, above all else, we do show uh, the data. Ray, any comments here, or shall we move on? Uh, no. Oh, like um, I think that just reinforces what I said on the last slide. So you know, a benchmarking culture kind of permeates everything we do here, and you know, it's that culture as much as the technology innovations that we're going to talk about later and the kind of collaboration we're going to talk about later, it's that benchmarking culture that permeates everything that we do in FIDO that really allows us to hit terabit speeds. We'll get more deeper into that in a few slides, I think. Actually, we're getting it now, so go. <laughs> Okay, so this is my favorite slide. This is the this is the hook slide. Um, so I guess we're kind of showing you where we got to at the start of the presentation, and then we'll we're showing you the the cake that's being made, and then we're going to show you how to make the cake, right? Um, 
So this is a this is a screenshot, I guess, from a recent demo we did, where we had a dual socketed, uh, third generation Xeon scalable um, um, uh, platform from Intel, also known as Ice Lake Whitley platform from Intel, and we were running um, we were running ter uh, IPsec on it across both sockets. We were able to take advantage of all the optimizations that that platform gave us. Things like PCI Express Gen 4, things like additional sockets, things like additional memory controllers, things like improvements in instruction sets. And we're going to talk a little bit about Vector AES later and the help the Vector AES was to us. But we're able to leverage all of those things, bring them to all together through FIDO and actually benchmark a throughput of uh, one terabit, a sec uh, one, ter one terabit through that single dual socketed Intel platform. So this is where we got to. This is a really impressive data, you know, and we actually include a link at the end for the video where you can actually go see this demo in action. It's on, it's on YouTube and I'd encourage you to go do that. But this is the cake that we made. You know, this is a stack you can go download from um, Fido BPP today. You can get yourself a, a dual socketed Intel server and repeat this. And that's very much what Fido is all about. This is something that's not just a, a, I guess, a demo for YouTube, but this is very repeatable. We make the software is available, the platforms are available. You can make this happen in your lab. Okay, okay. I say next slide. Okay, so, uh, and on to that, I'll kick you through a little bit of what we're gonna talk today, how the cake is made. So we're going to talk a little bit upfront about the trends driving and influencing FIDO's work. So uh, why IPsec is such a hot topic at the moment and why we did this work in the first place. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. We're then also going to talk about VPP and the optimizations we did to VPP. I'm very enthusiastic about VPP. So we're going to spend a little bit of time framing VPP, what it is, how it works. We're going to also spend a little bit of time about how we optimize VPP for an ice like quickly platform. And then we're also going to spend a little bit of time on additional few features that got added to VPP recently that you might be interested in. Um, uh, also, um, we're also going to spend a, get a deeper dive into CSIT. CSIT's a project in FIDO, which I'm really excited about, and I don't think we talk about nearly enough. Um, so VPP, and when I talk about the benchmarking culture that permeates FIDO, VPP is, sorry, CSIT, forgive me, Magic. So when we talk about the benchmarking culture that permeates FIDO, CSIT is the project in FIDO that drives that culture. CSIT is the one that drives the innovation around benchmarking and the other aspects of benchmarking that really, you know, that really allows VP, FIDO VPP and the other VP, uh, FIDO assets to, be, to enable people to be able to build these terabit network services. So VPP, CSIT has a central role in that. And we're going to deep dive into CSIT's central role in helping us to build terabit network services. And then we'll round out with a bit of a summary. All right, so let's move on. Um, we're going to look at uh, trends that impact the work we do, specifically across uh, within the FDAO, specifically across the, uh, the three dimensions, compute, evolution of Moore's law, cloud, developments in distributed computing, and internet security. Um, so let's, uh, let's look uh, quickly at uh, those three aspects. I know it is a bit of a, a busy visual, um, so, um, uh, but it's, uh, that's because it's trying to capture quite a, a few trends happening in the, uh, in the silicon. So the, the Moore's law, as we, I think most of us know, have been running out of steam, has been running out of steam for some time and has been replaced by sort of two dimensions um, of the evolution of silicon. The more, more, and I'm using the terminology toyed by um, the, uh, uh, ITRS and, uh, and IRDS, uh, which are part of IEEE Rebooting Computing um, Initiative, and uh, links are at the bottom of the slide. So more, more, and, uh, and more than more. More, more is, is basically um, uh, scaling the silicon performance, uh, speed, power, and improving the density and lowering the cost uh, by shrinking the physical uh, features. This slide is actually from uh, this graphic is from 2010 original white paper um, uh, from uh, from ITRS uh, but it's still being used 
we are now getting to five nanometer and uh, and uh, you know ibm is proving that three nanometer is, is possible and then there'll be stuff beyond beyond silicon before beyond uh, beyond CMOS. the other dimension the horizontal one uh, the the uh, the, um, uh, the blue arrow is the um, focusing on functional diversification and specialization and um, the net result is the purple arrow um, a combination of uh, those two dimensions and this is where software like FDIO um, very much plays the role concentrating on on uh, on packet IO intensive workloads and um, and using the latest optimized software to hardware interface for the hardware that that is being optimized for uh, for IO and we've seen that from 2016 within the FDIO happening very much on all platforms so today we touch uh, Intel um, uh, Xeons and Atoms um, processors and cores. We touch. We, we also test uh, uh, ARM, uh, and we're waiting for the latest uh, N1 SKUs. And we also test AMD. In all of these, there's a lot of attention uh, paid to to I/O. So it is the combination of those two dimensions, more and more, and more than more, that um, that results in those terabit speeds that um, uh, the Ray talked about. And, um, and the, the, the way that BPP software adopts the latest hardware um, and, and, and hardware optimizations, this is where uh, Ray will, will talk about uh, later in the context of, um, of, uh, of IPsec and, and crypto. The other dimension is um, the, uh, the, the distributed computing. So moving away from, from silicon and processors or single machines to distributed computing, now you know, everybody calls it the cloud um, or internet connected computing. Um, I like the way that I mean Vagdat uh, uh, captured uh, the evolution of cloud technologies um, in his Sikdom, uh, Sikcom 2020 uh, keynote. And if you haven't watched it, it's quite an enlightening uh, talk. So starting with Epoch One, when internet started, FTP email telnet, and getting us to where we are today with um, uh, ML and um, dominating the applications and, and also consumers' lives, I guess, to a degree. And highly distributed applications. Um, so we're entering Epoch Five, and uh, and that's that's dominated by or characterized by high speeds, uh, multi terabit and also the other aspect is uh, much lower latencies, with you know um, aiming in the context of the segregated compute uh, at ten microsecond uh, RPCs. So why is that important? Because it has repercussions across the whole stack. And that's uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure, network compute, virtual infrastructure, the virtual networking and virtual computing, um, uh, uh, virtualizations, uh, VMs, containers, and such, and distributed uh, apps. So, so we need to uh, we need to play. We we are playing in that in that field. And finally, security. The Specifically, uh, this uh, graphic is uh, uh, taken from the uh, recent Gartner uh, paper or report, and that's um, where Gartner um, defined the uh, this marketing uh, term uh, SASE, uh, Secure Access Service Edge, that encapsulates really major industry trends: zero trust applied to network apps and resources, quite often referred to as ZTA or ZTNA, secure and encrypted communications, um, anywhere and everywhere. So uh, everything on the wire is uh, either already is or will be encrypted. So no clear text on the wire in networking. And um, basically making, uh, 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 making sure that the importance of, of encryption skyrockets. And, uh, and that's where the telebit level software networking uh, helps. Now, so, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. So we're going to we're going to talk a little bit uh, about FIDO VPP here. I'm just going to provide enough kind of context in order to help the rest of the presentation. You know, there are other deeper dives on FIDO VPP available on the internet. And um, you know, if you're looking for a, de a, a deeper dive, you know, the FIDO website's a great place to start for that. Uh, but I'm going to take you through the kind of broad strokes of FIDO and how it's been recently been optimized. How we've recently optimized IPsec. Uh, next slide. Please. So one of the key aspects of FIDO VPP, and really to classify what FIDO VPP is, is FIDO VPP is a you know a high performance network stack in user space that scales very, very well 
with the more resources you give it. So the more cores you give it, the faster it goes. Uh, it's very, very feature complete. You know, it supports a um, it supports a range of networking protocols at layer two and layer three and layer four uh, and above. And we'll talk a little bit about more of that in a, in a moment. So that's really what FIDO VPP is. It's a networking stack in user space that's typically used to build high performance software defined networking applications. And when I talk about, you know, when I talk about performance culture or benchmarking culture permeating everything we do at FIDO, in FIDO, you can see examples of it here. We test out to many, many cores, you know, so we test per core scaling. So if you look at the first row here, you'll see single core performance. If you look at the second row, you'll see dual core performance. And if you look at the third row, you'll see quad core performance across a range of IPv4 and IPv6 test cases. We also test scale out because, you know, the typically the kinds of products that are built from FIDO VPP are things like high performance routing software, high performance NATing software, high performance IPsec software. And those typically handle many, many tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands, even perhaps millions of flows concurrently. And you can see here for the IPv4 and IPv6 test cases, we do just that, we test at scale. The two things I'd point out here is the great per core scaling we have. With a single core, you're getting 17.6 million packets per second in IPv4 performance on, a, um, uh, on an Intel Gold uh, 6252N. On a, uh, on, with two cores, you're getting 32 million packets a second. And on four cores, you're getting 70 million packets a second. And that's fantastic scaling. But also, as we scale up the number of routes concurrently, we also see that you're not dropping performance significantly. Your performance goes from 17.6 million packets a second when the sing with a single route down to 15.7 million packets per second on a single core, by the way, with 2 million routes. So we test at scale, test many, many cores, test many, many routes. And also you can see on the left-hand side, we also test with many nodes. So we test things like multiple CNFs and multiple VNFs and those kind of topologies. So maybe we could move to the next slide then. So um, really, when I get into the slide, I should preface this by saying Damian Marion actually is one of the core contributors to VPP, uh, deserves a lot of credit. He's been a kind of a key innovator in the community. And much of this wouldn't have been possible without Damian. Um, so there's a number of technologies that we've been built into FIDO VPP that really optimize IPsec performance on third generation Intel scalable processors. The first thing I'd point out is a technology in FIDO VPP called multi-arch variance. FIDO VPP is designed around a graph node. Uh, it is designed around a hierarchy of graph nodes. And you can see an example on the screen of an IP, typical IPsec pipeline where you have multiple graph nodes. Each graph node <coughs> is responsible for a different part of the IPsec uh, processing pipeline. Now, what multi-arch variance allows us to do, it allows us to add platform-specific optimizations. So we can, we can add optimizations using things like Intel AVX 512 instruction set, or add optimizations using things like Intel Vector AES, specifically for accelerating AES cryptography. And we can add those in a way that are available on platforms that support it, and are not, you know, are, but have another fallback, a software fault, typically a fallback, a less optimized fallback on platforms that don't support the optimization. And it's FIDO VPP multi-arch variants that make, make that possible all within the single binary. When the binary starts up, it detects the platform on which it's executing and it selects the most optimized version of itself to go run. Another technology that we added recently was uh, the Flow API. And this allows you to configure the network cards that support it to direct IP, one IPsec flow to a given core and another IPsec flow to another core and to spread your IPsec load over multiple, multiple cores and allow you to balance the IPsec load across the system. And uh, that's available through the Flight of VPP Flow API and it's supported on many numbers of uh, Intel NICs. The final, um, final technology I want to talk about today is Intel's Vector AES technology. And this was something specifically added to on the ice lake platform to accelerate AES cryptography. 
Now, uh, Fido VPP added its own highly optimized native implementation uh, uh, of the uh, basically of, of AAS encryption and decryption, and has made that available. And that gets automatically selected, automatically pulled in, and um, executes automatically through the Fido VPP multi arch variants. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to do very much. When you run Fido VPP on a nice like platform, and you're you know you're executing an IPsec pipeline, it's already executing this accelerated uh, vector AES instruction set in order for you to get the best possible performance. And it happens out of the box. Okay. So what else are we adding to Fido VPP? And um, next slide, Magic. Actually, uh, before we move, uh, Ray, um, there are questions coming in about uh, multi-platform support, AMD. Um, so um, just to re-emphasize, um, uh, uh, VPP and Sysit uh, equally um, uh, run, and we do test um, uh, Intel Xeon R uh, Atom um, ARM and also uh, AMD. And uh, if you click on some of the reports published later, uh, the link published later, you will see that the full suite of, of, um, of the platforms we, we test. And just to emphasize um, what um, Ray said about this slide. So in case it didn't sink in, when you run the PPP code um, on uh, any compute platform, it will detect the platform it's running on and it will use the most optimal uh, instruction uh, uh, code with the most optimal instruction set using that, uh, that platform. And that's quite, that's quite cool. And the operator and the, and the user have a choice of you know, which versions they want to use or just use the latest. And it happens automatically. And this is, I think, an excellent um, representation of what uh, Mr. Patterson and Hennessy um, talk about in their computer, computer science books about the optimized software hardware interface. It's an excellent demonstration thereof. And it all happens automatically out of the box. Yeah. But wait, there's more. And we've been very busy. So like Fido VPP is, you know, very rich in terms of protocol support and we support other secure protocols. Uh, a WireGuard support was recently added in VPP 2101. And uh, we're going on looking at adding acceleration for WireGuard support at the moment that's in, that's in the works. Quick support was also added in Fido VPP 2105. So, you know, in, in, we have a host stack in FIDO VPP mm -hmm. where applications, where we can link against applications, uh, TCP, TLS, and quick applications, and they can use FIDO VPP as infrastructure, as an alternative to say the Linux kernel. Uh, we also added support for multiple different kinds of crypto engines, and that's been there for some time. Uh, we support uh, asynchronous cryptography through, uh, through accelerations such as Intel Quick Assist. And then we also support multiple versions of software cryptography. So we heard earlier about FIDO VPP's native implementation that implements the vector AES instruction set on Intel. But we also have a link and use the Intel IPsec multi-buffer library to support other protocols such as Chacha Poly and so on. And then we also support OpenSSL for an even wider set of protocols as well. Well. So, you know, FIDO VPP supports a wide set of protocols through software cryptography and it also through various pulling in various different libraries, and it, but it also supports asynchronous cryptography through accelerators such as Intel Quick Assist technology. We also support, have it, we've added recently, you heard me refer to it earlier, we have the TLS stack and we also, you know, support multiple forms of uh, a TLS cryptography also. Okay. All right. So um, let's uh, move on and dive into some of the detail. Um, so we're going to talk now about the uh, the Sysit project itself. Uh, this is a single slide um, that, or a single visual that provides the quick overview of what Sysit project is. Um, I think the goals very much uh, repeat uh, or aligned with the guiding principles I talked about. Um, it's about fostering good engineering discipline and uh, by you know. Uh, focusing on uh, functional and, and performance benchmarking and uh, providing the developers with um, and testers with the tools um, to that regard, including the, um, as you will see later, um, some automated um, anomaly detection and such. And uh, defining the metrics and, and also trying to do our best to guard the code quality from the networking perspective. We execute um, 
uh, all of the uh, CISID uh, framework and uh, uh, VPP, and also it has the DPDK applications as a reference um, in the um, uh, labs, FDIO labs hosted by Linux Foundation Networking. Uh, uh, most of that girl is actually living in, uh, in Canada and um, all data is available and including the low level um, uh, Jenkins logs and um, console logs, robot logs, uh, Python logs and, and generally uh, pretty much everything. And, um, and uh, the other important thing is that um, the FDIO CISIT benchmarking environment and tooling we develop is portable and it's, it's available for you know, cloning. And uh, you will see later um, what this enables when Ray talks about some of the, the, the terabit um, uh, testing and also the IPSEC testing done in Vendor's lab uh, using the latest hardware, all in the, CISIT, uh, in the clone of CISIT environment. So uh, not to uh, spend too much time because we, we keep hovering at the sort of high and mid level, but uh, we do have few challenges um, when we uh, when we uh, uh, evolve and develop uh, VPP software. And that is maintaining the, uh, the quality across uh, uh, the code uh, base across, uh, across uh, multiple platforms. So that's where the more than more um, is, you know, it's, it's uh, flooding us with the uh, varieties of, uh, uh, in our lab case, Intel ARM and AMD platforms. We have more and more you know, test use cases and, uh, and, and clearly the speeds um, are, are, are going. We are currently at the 100 gig index and, uh, and, and going up. So um, again, for better or worse, benchmark shape of field. I think we've seen this uh, quote uh, before. So let's go into set of the um, innovation, communication, collaboration aspects uh, within, the, within the project. We're gonna start with, uh, with innovation. The, um, uh, another uh, busy slide from my side. So talking about the importance of benchmarking, um, we run all of our tests automatically, and, uh, but we do need to execute quite a volume of, uh, of tests uh, and we need to run them continuously. So what we found out the hard way, of course, is that if we stick to traditional tools and traditional methodologies, um, we won't be able to actually deliver on what we, uh, what we are asked to do. It's a, a, the, basically the combinations of hardware platforms, test use cases, configs, traffic profiles, you know, core, queue combinations, and so on. If you if you live or lift or or interface with this world, you know what uh, what that is. Um, basically, it's um, it's uh, uh, and, and and also executing uh, different acceptance criteria for performance limits is basically taking too long. So to that end, we have come up with. Uh, set of methodologies, and some of them we are standardizing in, uh, in the ITF. I will quickly walk through them on the graph um, that you see on the left. So um, the, um, the first one is um, uh, our maximum receive rate um, uh, benchmarking, which is uh, basically a fast rapid test. Um, test time is in the order of seconds, where we uh, measure um, the performance, whether this is you know, packets per second, bits per second, connections per second, or, or transactions per second, depending on what we test. And we're able to deploy it in our um, uh, uh, daily uh, trending tests for anomaly detection and, uh, and such. And we are able to execute thousands of those tests a day. Then comes the multiple loss ratio search, where we um, measure um, with um, uh, RFC 2544 um, uh, accuracy, uh, where we measure multiple rates, each with different loss ratio acceptance criteria, including zero frame loss and, um, and partial frame loss. And those tests take in the order of minutes. And uh, we execute those tests on the weekly basis and also um, for the um, uh, report to verify repeatability. And the final one, is the, uh, the uh, PLR search, um, the probabilistic loss ratio search, um, which we use for uh, soak testing. Um, and um, we use them for stateless tests and for stateful tests. Now, uh, you may ask, why do we need all three um, uh, and, um, and, and those multiple rates? Uh, that's because um, what we want to verify that the test, that the, the system we test in the configuration we test is actually behaving well and deterministic. And that is where all of those listed rates um, stay uh, close to each other. And that's what we call a deterministic system. Um, the MLR search 
is is currently being um, standardized in ITF benchmarking working group. And here is a, a quick example of um, what we gain from applying uh, MLR search versus just standard binary search um, for uh, rates discovery. Um, and, and the data is from uh, 2018, so it's a bit old, but uh, we, we've seen three to five times or, um, or even more uh, a time reduction in test execution, which basically allows us to, um, to execute three to five times more tests in the unit of time. So um, we talked a lot about what we're doing, um, uh, uh, how we're collecting the data. Uh, now let's talk about what we're doing with the data and how we are using it to, uh, to achieve our stated goals. So as I said earlier, um, communicating openly and widely and showing the data is one of our uh, guiding principles. Uh, we have two main channels for uh, uh, um, uh, uh, propagating and distributing the data uh, and sharing with, uh, with the community and industry at large. Uh, the first one is uh, trending. We perform the trending um, tests and trending reports daily and weekly. They are uh, fully uh, automated. There's no human uh, interaction involved in any of the, from the test execution to the data being published. And uh, what you can see on this uh, chart on the left is a menu um, that is user browsable um, using Greta Docs uh, template. And uh, in the center, you see an example of the uh, MRR daily chart, in this case for the um, L2 switching uh, test cases with the uh, machine-based anomaly detection um, uh, 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 emphasizing the progressions, the green circles and the regressions, the red circles. Uh, in addition, we also uh, have a system sending notification emails, uh, listing the tests, the builds, and, uh, and so on, um, summari and summarizing and listing the progressions and regressions. Uh, the charts are fully browsable. You can zoom in and you can actually see which build is involved in a, in a specific regression or, um, or, or progression. As we do have uh, automated anomaly detection, um, uh, we, uh, we, we clearly um, uh, have also automated, or this gives us an opportunity to automate also the um, uh, bisecting of regressions and progressions. And, and that's exactly what we, what we do. And that's what we use for root cause analysis and, um, and, and such. The second channel is the, uh, the reports. Um, we release the reports uh, every release. Uh, at this stage, uh, uh, the releases are uh, always synchronized with BPP. So um, uh, at this moment, we have uh, three releases a year. And uh, we show those uh, box and whiskers graphs um, and uh, run tests multiple times, uh, at least 10 times to verify uh, repeatability. And, and we also, if any um, regressions um, uh, do uh, sneak in, sneak through, um, we, whether it's due to hardware uh, or environment change uh, or, or you know, environment change like uh, Linux um, uh, change, uh, we mainly test on Ubuntu uh, or kernel change. Uh, we capture those. Uh, we capture those there. So before you skip, before you move on, Magic, can I just ch chip in a bit on the last uh, slide? Um, of course. You know, I I I can't underestimate the value of the, these these reports. I reach for these all the time, sometimes multiple times a day. There's actually a huge amount of data in here, a huge amount of data that's going to be very really valuable. To you that I'd encourage you to go really take a hard look at these. So the, at the top level, it gives you the expected performance of a whole a raft of test cases across a whole bunch of different Intel and uh, AMD and ARM platforms. So if you've just installed FIDO and you're trying, you're running an IP6 scenario, sorry, an, um, an IP forwarding scenario, IP6 form, IPv4, IPv6, um, IPsec, and you want to just even just checkpoint your performance. You can reach for the FIDO CSIT report and see actually, okay, this is the performance they are getting. This is the performance I'm getting on a roughly equivalent system. And you can use that to sanity check your, uh, sanity check your installation. But you can also drill down if you're looking to get understand how the actual test cases themselves are configured, the configuration data is there. If you're looking to actually drill down even further and actually understand at even a graph node level, 
you know how how the system was performing how many um you know uh, how, how many clock cycles each graph node is taking that information is there is also so there's a wealth of information here about at the high level what your performance expectations should be in millions of packets a second what your latency expectations should be about also a, a configuration of a raft of different test cases and actually and a deeper dive drilling down the, the performance of each testing cases so you know if you haven't actually seen these reports before you'll be blown away by the depth and breadth of information that's here yeah that's a good point uh, uh ray and in fact you reminded me that um um the in terms of the reports so folks may not be familiar on what we what we measure so we, we measure packet throughput using all those different methodologies i described earlier and if you go down the menu um uh, you can see that um, we also uh, graph the speed up multi-core to verify linearity of speed up. Um, we we do measure um, a, a, a packet latency uh, each each way, and, uh, and we have number of different um, uh, um, uh, subgroups of tests, including the NFV service density, where we measure um, a, a, a box full of uh, container uh, container based um, VNFs uh, or CNFs. Uh, or VM-based VNFs as a, as a workload in the container or VM, we use either DPTK application or, or BPP. We run a number of uh, host stack testing, um, uh, TCP IP, and recently integrated with NGINX, uh, GSO testings. And we also uh, do comparisons between different, um, uh, different uh, hardware that the tests run on, and also between the releases. And going forward, we will be actually um, providing a curable, uh, sorry, a, a query interface to um, to the database uh, backend that contains that will contain um, all of the um, FDIO data ever measured um, from from the inception of the project from 2016. We expect to go live with that uh, towards the end of the year, and then hopefully we can see something like uh, more than more uh, graphs uh, in that. And then there is one more uh, a point, uh, Ray, that I don't think we actually captured um, in our um, in our uh, uh, talk uh, early, talks earlier, and that is that uh, one of the tools we have um, embedded in VPP is a Perfmon tool, and um, Perfmon tool um, allows you to actually verify uh, resource usage on on a per VPP node uh, basis uh, with uh, cycle processor or CPU cycle accuracy. We now integrated the VVP Perfmon with uh, Sysit. Uh, it's our first release and uh, the report will be going out uh, uh, in two weeks time, 2106. Uh, we will not be uh, uh, graphically presenting any of the data, uh, but we will provide uh, a sort of interface into viewing the data and looking at the uh, uh, cycles per uh, packet, per specific node, uh, IPC and, and such. All of that data is now available for all um, assisted tests. Um, uh, so the, you know, we're expecting a, a great benefit uh, to, the, to the community. So the, one of the questions in the chat window was, um, you know, is FIDO VPP being used in the production environment? You know, and the kind of the breadth and the depth of the testing that you see here that we do on FIDO VPP is what both allows us to have confidence about the production grade of this software, but also it's what allows us to hit that terabit. You know, you know, you can't lose your performance patch by patch, release by release, and you know, really get to terabit grade performance. Whereas this CSID infrastructure is what is enabling us is is driving that performance culture and allowing us to build that production grade software and yeah fido is used in production grade software and this is the testing this is the benchmarking that's backing that up so finally we're going to talk so, a bit about collaboration right yep so uh, I guess, you know, we, we kind of showed the cake earlier or the, the baked cake earlier, and we've walked you through uh, quite a lot of the detail of um, how we baked the cake, you know, 
really we were reacting to a strong industry pull for high performance secure connectivity so we hope Fido responds to the trends that are out there in the industry and the community at the moment and then we were building on top of a, a, a really a rich new set of accelerations available on the third generation Intel Xeon scale processor but you know we were starting from a great base and I'd encourage people to look at the previous webinar done by, you know, from our colleagues at NetGate and NetGate also build technology with, with FIDO and from Cisco and Intel where they, they, they dig in deeper into the guts of how the FIDO VPP IPsec implementation actually works at a more granular level. So the, the message there is we were starting from a great base. The FIDO VPP uh, IPsec stack has been years in development, you know, and it's used in a whole bunch of different software and bunch of different software today. So we were starting from a great base. We added a great platform and we were responding to a strong industry pull. And, you know, we, there's the video. We include the link to the video and we don't have time to go play it now. I apologize. But the video basically shows you us walking through the steps and the setup of a uh, of the a, a terabit IPsec platform and actually see, it shows you the the patch Exia sending and receiving a terabit of traffic and that traffic being encrypted uh, along the way. The, uh, all this data is going to be included in the next uh, CSIT report. So we, you saw, we spent a lot of time on the, uh, talking about the reports uh, in the, just in the previous slide. And the, the 2106 report is gonna include a lot of that deep dive information about executing test cases on third generation Intel Xeon scalable platforms. So if you're interested on how FIDO executes on Skylake, sorry, on Ice Lake, forgive me, uh, you know, that's all going to be contained in the FIDO 2106 uh, report. If you're interested in reading even further into the technical detail of uh, how the IPsec pipeline is put together, there's also a white paper from Intel, and that's the third link there where we dig into the technical detail of how we optimize the vector AES and how we is optimized with AVX512. And again, a lot of the credit goes to Damian Marion's input there. So yeah, there's a lot of links here that we think you should follow up on. You know, we were responding to a pull, starting from a great pla starting with a great platform and a ground great foundation in FIDO. So this is some of the this is some of the results. So I'm just showing you like the I guess the basic uplift that you get from the uh, Ice Lake platform before we dig in specifically to IPsec. So just with the existing test cases, uh, IPv4 routing and IPv6 routing, you can see generation to generation, and this is comparing Cascade Lake to Ice Lake. So this is the second generation Xeon scalable processor, the third generation Xeon scalable processor. You'll see you're getting a, maybe a, about a 1.2x uplift gen on uh, gen on gen just in the mo without looking at the specific optimizations we did for ICE, uh, IPsec. You know, standard test cases like IPv4 routing, IPv6 routing are getting a 1.2x performance uplift gen on gen from Cascade Lake to Ice Lake. But then when we look at the IPsec, which is the next slide, we can see that there has been a really dramatic uplift. And, and yep, oh, there's the next slide. So you can see from the optimizations that we discussed earlier, and we discussed all those optimizations that we added to FIDO VPP, we discussed things like the, uh, the multi-arch variants to add sp platform specific optimizations to FIDO VPP. We discussed things like the native uh, vector AES implementation that exists in FIDO. And then there's a whole slew of other optimizations that have been done using AVX 512 also available in FIDO VPP today. And all that's been pulled together in one package and automatically executes out of the box on that ice like platform and this is what the result is you know for when you're uh, for a four uh, for a four tunnel scenario sorry yeah it's a four tunnel scenario you're getting a 3.5x uplift between um between um <clears throat> skylake and that's a first generation z on scalable and processor to third generation z on scalable processor so you're getting a very dramatic uplift because of these 
additional optimizations that are getting automatically pulled in. And that scales out reasonably well as we you know, scale out the number of IPsec tunnels. You know, that's 3x with 1,000 IPsec tunnels, and that's something like 2 to 2.5x with 10,000 IPsec tunnels. So it scales out very, very well. And so this is the kind of performance uplift that this kind of these platform level optimizations that are automatically enabled are giving you. But a lot of the, most of this was really, oh, sorry, all of this was really uh, made possible through a very, very strong collaboration that happens in the FIDO community. And Intel have that collaboration with the FIDO community, but other vendors have that, that collaboration. ARM is there also, AMD is there also, contributing platforms and contributing optimizations also. So this isn't only an Intel story. And there are other platform vendors also looking to uh, uh, optimize FIDO for their platform and also adding optimizations for FI in FIDO for their platforms only. You know, we were able to tell a really good story today because uh, around IPsec and we're delighted to be able to do that. So um, to emphasize what, what Ray said, um, uh, the, in the many cases in the past, um, what we have found with uh, those compute platforms, um, they were actually uh, uh, IO bound in many cases for, for VPP performance. Now the IO has been addressed over the last few years. Um, we, especially for uh, crypto, um, whether it's IPsec or, or TLS, we are going back into the core bound. And, um, and we are wait, awaiting a, a high core parts from pretty much all vendors uh, we have in FDIO Sysit uh, Labs, uh, and that's uh, AMD, uh, ARM, and uh, Intel. Um, and we expect to be going into the uh, very much operating in the um, a, a terabit uh, a space for a single machine uh, encryption decryption uh, for for a box full uh, demos uh, running in bare metal now. Of course, one may say that this is uh, not realistic to do in um, in production to run a terabit um, uh, speeds, but um, but but we're using it really to demonstrate that capabilities are there and how people package it, um, and uh, and how do they uh, uh, package those virtual fun um, network functions and specific network operations? Um, it's uh, it's up to them. So. Uh, we do provide the uh, per core uh, numbers and the core, uh, uh, you know, uh, multi-core uh, speed up. Uh, so far, we've seen uh, mainly or close to linear speed up, um, and we are looking to do some uh, uh, box full like tests in Sysit um, uh, once we have enough uh, NICs and hardware. Um, and um, but uh, if you do the maths uh, based on these charts and also what you see in YouTube videos. Um, you will see that uh, terabit is very much uh, here. Great, I think and we the need scale to jump here to... is millions of packets per second, uh, right? And the packet size here is uh, uh, 1518, uh, as as noted. So, um, uh, Ray, we have eight minutes left. I think it's time to get a, a summary and then uh, go into Q and A. I think we have a few questions that we would like to answer live. Uh, super and thanks, Magic. So yeah, just to just to round out, um, you know, Fido is all about collaboration. Um, you know, uh, you know, it, we'd love for you to come and we'd love for you to show up and uh, to, you know to uh, to engage with us. You know, either through the through the mailing lists or through the monthly calls. You know, really please reach out and you know please download the software, try it out, give us feedback, tell us what you think, tell us what you think chime in with issues and uh, we'd love to hear from you you know we really the two key assets that we talked about today was you know by the vpp you know as a toolkit to build best in class crypt uh, best in class network functions and uh, also a fido sees it as a means to test opens uh, you know it is mean to test this uh, this end-to-end -end open source toolkit for testing terabit level network functions and those are the kind of two key messages for you today yeah. So just to add a few words from my side, um, just uh, uh, a bit of a you know, call to arms or appeal. If you really want to be pushing the envelope in software networking uh, and driving it and making seemingly impossible uh, happen in real, um, we believe that projects like FDIO is the place uh, to be in. So we've got a couple of questions and some of which uh, I, I think yeah. we, can, we can answer live. Uh, one of is, 
What do you think of the FIDO advantage over XDP EVPF, which intercepts packets earlier on the NIC driver? If there is performance comparison report available, could you please share? Thanks. Um, so maybe I can go ahead and add, add, add you know, answer this. Yeah, go ahead. So you know, FIDO VPP, um, EBPF and XDP are great projects. You know, they're doing really interesting work in uh, the Linux kernel. Um, one of the th advantages I'd say we'd have versus those projects, and I, I really don't like, you know, it's, it's not one's better than the other. I very much think of them as different tools for different problems. But FIDO VPP runs entirely in user space. It runs entirely in user space. So you can GDB, you know, you can add a debugger to FIDO VPP and really dig into the source code very easily and find out what's going on. For things like failover scenarios, if FIDO VPP crashes, it doesn't, it doesn't crash your entire system. So you can build more resilient systems, more debuggable on more traceable systems with FIDO. And I think for me, that's very much the advantage in addition to things like better platform optimization and better scaling. So, you know, I, I don't like to think of it in terms of, you know, competing tools, you know, the, uh, the traceability that eBPF and XDP add to the kernel is really fantastic. I really think of them as different tools for different problems. Uh, so that's one. Magic, maybe you'd like to answer this one. Yes, yeah, so I would like to, uh, I would actually like to take uh, all the other uh, three questions because they are very much in the same space. So the first question is, um, um, and I mean, which products in the market offer uh, FDIO capability? And also, are you aware of any FDIO deployments in the IAS or PAS, so infrastructure as a service or platform as a service product in any major public cloud providers? Um, we are aware of uh, BPP technology used in many um, uh, deployments, including IAS and PAS, uh, but um, the best uh, friend is really a, a Google uh, search tool and the mailing list. We encourage the vendors and, and uh, uh, cloud service providers to publish um, the um, uh, to publish their use cases for VPP. Not all of them do. In fact, quite a few of them do. But you can glean who is using it by just looking at the mailing list VPP dev at least .io, and uh, sysit at uh, uh, list dot .io. So hopefully that answers the question. And, um, and the other question is, um, are there performance numbers available for public clouds? Um, we did uh, onboard uh, SysIt um, uh, environment onto AWS on the C5N uh, specific um, uh, instances. And um, uh, we will be publishing uh, the, uh, the numbers um, of uh, running a subset of the tests on AWS C5N instances in the in the context of CISA 2106 release, probably not in two weeks time, but in one of the maintenance releases. So hopefully um, uh, the community and people here will find it um, uh, useful. Okay, okay, and I think that's more or less us, is, unless there's any other questions. Okay, uh, I suppose we should round it up with a thank you. Thank you for attending. Um, you know, we're available through the, the contact means below. You can find our website at fd.io and you can get the source code from git.fd.io. And we're, you know, we have a Twitter channel that you can all follow. I, I prefer, I'm an old school guy. I prefer more old school methods. So we have a public mailing list. You can reach out to us on, reach out to us on, um, uh, and uh, you can join the mailing list on fd.io. I wonder. I think perhaps another question has come in. No, I think we're 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 done. Well, let's let's give it uh, maybe a moment, um, in case any any more questions come up, uh, or if there are any questions that want to be asked live. I don't know, Jill, whether we have that uh, capability here. Uh, yeah, if somebody's got a question you want to ask, just hit the raise hand feature, and we'll uh, unmute you. And as a reminder, uh, the recording will be available in the next few days. And we are also going to be uh, determining who our winners are for the Fido puppy. So stay tuned for that as well. It's very exciting, I know. So this is for the best or the, or the most difficult or uh, most unusual question. I guess the criteria is to be... Uh... Yes, all of the above. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. All right, folks, if there are no more questions, then thanks very much thank again. You. Thank and, you very uh, much. See you um, engaging with the community and uh, with us ourselves. Thanks very much. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.